Am I ever angry? Am I lucky after all? Do you want to introduce it? <laughs> Whistle or you like. Yeah, welcome back to Seeker Summary number two. This is on the Reebok Legacy Lifters uh, with their exo frame skeleton. <laughs> it says exo frame. So. All right, so we're going to go through a few different parts of the shoe, and Darren's going to start with the aesthetics. Yeah, so they're very futuristic looking. Yeah, I like the look. Uh, it looks kind of cool, and especially when you see them in person, you have like these like flying buttresses that come out to support it. There's kind of three different ones. Mm -hmm. They do look quite cool. Yeah, I do like the look of them. But I'd never ever be seen in public wearing them. Well, I hope you're not wearing weightless you shoes in public. No, I just mean I probably wouldn't wear them in the gym. You wouldn't wear them in the gym. Anything this shiny mm -hmm. is probably a bit. I understand. My personal preference. Yeah. If we're talking about aesthetics, yeah. I just prefer like normal lock colors but they do look quite cool yeah they do they definitely look unique uh do you see a lot of shoes kind of just moving on from their old models or just like adding something slightly different from the last model yeah these are definitely gone back to the drawing board uh and designed an entirely new shoe and obviously there is a massive amount of colorways you can get for those so moving on from the aesthetics which Realistically, we're never going to care that much about. No. To a certain extent. So, practicality. The positives of the shoe, I think, are it has phenomenal sturdiness. Like, it's absolutely A1 when it comes to its stability, rigidity all around. So, what I really like is what they've done is at the bottom is they have made the heel pretty much as wide as you can get, I think. Yeah before it starts getting too wide. So you really want a wide base and weight in the shoes. That's always good. So Nike have that really well. The Antis have that. So this part of the shoe, this part is as wide as you can get. So it's actually narrower than the bottom here, but they have made this, I think this is on the limit is how wide you get and it still works really well. I like the, so I really like the ankle stability here. I like how much you're kind of locked in. Yeah. Uh, what do you like? That's, so something that's lacked in, in other shoes and like, the Addy Powers uh, and the Nike Threes, I think is like lateral stability here, like Gurf was saying. And they seem to have overcome that with like a strip of plastic that's gone into the shoe. The exo frame. The, the exo frame. It's called uh, it. So like that looks like it was there to like overcome problems that other shoes have had in the past. And I think it works, yeah. It definitely does work. Like the build quality of the shoes overall. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. They're really, really solid. And like Gurf's worn them training a few times. I've only worn them twice ever. Uh, so like we haven't worn them for ages, we don't know how they're gonna weather, but they are very, very solid uh, shoes, like really well constructed. You can see like there's no exposed seams, there's no like open ends that look like they're gonna fray. Uh, everything looks good. The Velcro in the straps, which is something that really, really annoys me uh, on a few other shoes that's like kind of too weak. It's like the slightly more modern Velcro that like fluff and stuff doesn't stick to it. Yeah. Uh, they're well-made shoes. The the straps are like they were saying. They tie in nice and tight, so it's actually very tight in the upper part of the shoe. What I really like as well. So if you watched our ID Power Two review, was I said the insole, this uh, the sole of the shoe. Even if you remove it or add your own one, is too soft to lift them. And what these have done very well, just like the Antas, and actually a little bit better than the Nikes, is it's really solid. It's really firm on the foot when you walk out with a back squat or you're clean and jerking, you can really feel the rigidity of the insole inside in the shoe. But the biggest negative of the whole shoe, I think, is something we yeah. both found. Was the, it's actually, so if you, leave, if you can see from where you are, the rise at the front of the shoe is actually a lot higher than it should be. So when you're satching, you can get like a foam yeah. in underneath the front of the shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really really fucking high. So this is probably the downfall of the shoe for me personally is when Say for example in the Nikes and the Antis, which would be other two of the top three shoe weightlifting shoes that we think are available Is you can really feel your foot against the ground without being too soft So you still have rigidity while still being able to feel the ground. So a lot of people Watching this will be kind of amateur to intermediate weightlifters and you don't really need to think about where your foot is foot pressure Are you pulling on the midfoot or balls of your feet? But because it'll happen naturally when you're lifting and you're lifting with the correct technique, the problem with this is it doesn't allow that to happen naturally. No. So you have to force it a little bit. 
So if you see, if you're pressing the front of your foot, the back, you have to pull down really, like so you're putting a lot of pressure on both sides of this to keep the front foot down, right? The problem with that is we don't know, will that wear in after six months? Which you don't understand yeah. six months so doing that. It could be a thing that like, after you wear the shoe, like you were saying, it will wear in, uh, this will kind of straighten itself out and you'll get flat footed again. I don't see that happening though. No, like so for the session today I was wearing them, I was doing clean and jerk singles uh, and then clean singles. And as I, so like when I'm getting set up on the floor, I'm like a fairly heavy guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really, really weighting down so I can feel the pressure on the front of the, or on my toes at the front of the shoe. I'm pressing down, everything is as it should be in my head. And then as you start to pull off the floor, you get this like tilting forward and you'll just feel, because where you've been applying the pressure now and where your stability is coming from will start to wilt under the weight of the bar as you lift it in the first pull and you just feel yourself coming forward very, very slightly. Uh, and that is enough to fuck something up. Yeah, that, that is the biggest downfall of the whole shoe. And I think it's enough that it makes me not want to snatch in them. Now I don't think, like shoes aren't gonna make or break your lifts in total. So if you have a weight in the shoe compared to no weight in the shoe, you're gonna have a big difference. But then going from any weight in the shoe to another weight in the shoe isn't really gonna make you over the long run, it's not gonna add or take kilos in some regards no but for this this alone this like this feeling when i'm lifting that my front foot isn't naturally on the ground is it's um it's a big enough distraction when i'm lifting in them that i really really don't like it yeah so for people who are looking at this shoe and, and want to buy the shoe uh just to give you some like quick rundowns in terms of the heel height yeah. You're probably dealing with a heel that's slightly higher than the Nike twos or the Antas. Yeah, it's probably one of the highest heels I've lifted in, uh, or like stock out not, of the, out of the box heels. Not too high though. No, not too high. They're just slightly higher than the Antas. So if you're somebody who has bad ankle mobility, this is probably a good option for you. The second thing I'd say is that the fit of the the shoe is fairly narrow, so they're yeah. similar enough to like an Adi Power uh, or any of like the Adidas shoes. They're more narrow, and especially in the toe box. Yeah. Uh, they're narrower than the Nikes and narrower than the Antas. So I got the same shoe size as my Anta. And I, so it's quite tight up here, but I have a little bit extra room here. So like Dara was saying, I've kind of a white foot and the shoes are, they fit quite narrow at the front. A hobbit foot? A little hobbit <laughs> foot. So you could probably do another half size how much you normally get, say for example, if you've worn the Antas or the Nikes, but I'd be careful that you might go too small, it might feel too tight. So if you see some people lifting these, they leave the top strap open because it is a very tight strap. Yeah. Uh, something we didn't touch on is the weight. So they're actually light. Yeah, they're quite light. Like they yeah. don't feel they don't feel any heavier on foot or in your hand compared to any other like say the Antas or the Nike Twos. So who would we recommend these for? If I was someone who just wanted to do a lot of squatting, these would be an absolutely perfect, perfect shoe because they're very easy to get, so widely available. Yeah. You can get them really cheap. I think I got these on discount for like less than 120 euro which is very cheap which is like 80 or cheaper than the nikes or the um, antas yeah the other thing is they give you that yeah knee tracking that ankle mobility or like that increased range in the ankle yeah that you they won't get from a shoe of that price yeah like most of the time to get that heel like you have to go for a nike too yeah. or you have to go to do an anta like so for if you just do squats if you just like general strength training or your powerlifter, I think, and you just want to find a shoe for squatting, and these are absolutely, they're probably a little bit better even than the Yantas and the likes for yeah. just, just squatting, I would think these are a better option. For weightlifters, or for crossfitters, so for weightlifters in general, we would rank these probably either third or second, depending on, so for us, it's Nike 2s and Yantas, or Giant First. So what it comes down to between those is a personal preference, which isn't something you can really review out no, but these are definitely a subpar shoe compared to those two shoes. Yeah, I think uh, kind of a word of caution. I see a load of crossfitters wearing the are buying these shoes and wearing them. Yeah. Uh, in some of the other Reebok lifters, you'd have gotten away with doing uh, burpees, doing like work on the bar, mm -hmm. like toes to bar. You'd have gotten away with maybe some box jumps. Uh, you would have gotten away with lunges. These aren't like a hybrid crossover shoe. No, they're just a legit weightlifting shoe, which yeah. is great for- It's weight. perfect for, for like, just if you are thinking of like, if you've had like any of the older Reebok models and you're used to kind of, oh, I need them for thrusters and a wad, so I'm gonna just keep them on, you're probably not gonna get away with like, 
they're probably too heavy for doing the toes to bar and stuff like that. Yeah. They're definitely too high in the heel for doing box jumps or anything like that, uh, or that we'd recommend for doing that. Uh, so just keep that in mind that they are a different kind of shoe. They're a, a purer form of weightlifting shoe. I think two more thoughts. So one of them is on that subject, is I actually think if you're just a crossfitter who's doing, who wants a shoe just for your weightlifting and not for your wads, I actually think these would be very good because a lot of times we see crossfitters there's a massive amount of looseness in the bottom of the snatch or the clean. And I think this would help eliminate a lot of that. <coughs> so if you were looking for a shoe just to do your weightlifting and your cross and not do your crossfit wads or your any kind of any other kind of fitness training, I think these would be a fairly decent choice, especially considering the prices are lower than the other two shoes we mentioned. And then finally, what the fuck was I gonna say? Oh, so if you are a lifter who's inclined, the this issue, the front foot issue, is basically not really an issue in clean and jerks so that they're very rigid which was you definitely want for clean and jerks and they're not heavy so they haven't lost any kind of foot movements with the rigidity so you could definitely do clean and jerks in these but for snatching i think they're definitely so far compared to the other two mm -hmm. like you see meso asana clean and jerks in these but in snatches and these antas so they're certainly a good shoe yeah absolutely definitely a good shoe um i'd say overall they're definitely a solid buy but if you're just a weightlifter, I would consider this issue and then... Consider if you need, need that heel height too. Yeah, for sure. Because we, like, we've seen, especially with a few youths who've had them, mm -hmm. that the heels are just a bit too high. Uh, and that does affect your, like, your first pull in the snatch. Mm -hmm. uh, it affects a few different things, so keep that in mind. Especially in the jerk as well, like, so you don't want a too high of a heel height because it shifts your hips and your knees too far forward. Yeah. Okay, overall, I'd say out of... Um, Five stags, I'd give it. I'd give it like three point seven. Yeah, just not quite four. Yeah, it's a good shoe though for sure. Thanks, guys.